healthy. And B, what we're seeing right now is the global elite are, they have an issue with her, with her personality, her narcissism, and all these other words I'm not going to use on air. So they have this whole Byzantine civil war going on right now where some of them are literally trying to push her and Bill Clinton out of the air chute, especially Obama. You know, he's always had a frosty relationship with the Clintons. And now they see their chance where she has this weakness and they can finally get rid of her for good, the Clinton what? dynasty for good, right. and move her out of the way and they can take it, they go in the vacuum and suck up the power. Now, the kid, did you write that article? All I, all that I article? Is Igor from Young Frankenstein when he's like Abby Normal and he looks at the, the brain in the jar. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, Kit, did you write the article about uh, Obama embracing Bernie Sanders in yes, the White yes. House? Yes. Okay. So, can you can you break that down for us about the, that new relationship? Yeah. Basically, Obama, very unprecedent, unprecedent for a president. He invited the underdog Democrat uh, candidate for a so-called informal meeting at the White House. Now, as far as I know, the last time he did that was back in 2009, where he made the unprecedented move to get a Justice Department employee into the White House for an informal meeting. Now, that sounds simple, but reality is you have to go through so much bureaucracy to get a meeting with the president because they got to do all these security clearances and whatnot. And this was just a career employee. This was like a nobody in the, uh, the you know, a cog in the machine. And yet he got this lady from the Justice Department into the White House and she, he had a meeting with her for seven hours, several hours. And later on, it turned out that he wanted her at the meeting because they were uh, prodding her into becoming the uh, head of the IRS probe on the Tea Party uh, harassment. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, so there's a president, a president in which the uh, Obama will have informal meetings with people he, he wants to work with in the future. And he's already had a frosty relationship with Clinton. And then all of a sudden, Bernie Sanders, that's been practically nothing in the media. Media has been ignoring him almost as much as Ron Paul back in 2012 and 2008. All of a sudden, he goes from being nobody to being in the Oval Office, you know, with Obama still behind the desk, you know, having this meeting. So yes. that tells you a lot right there. Yeah, it does. Now, I want to get everybody's opinion on this, and whoever wants to chime in can chime in. If we can pull <laughs> up that Drudge poll. Um, why the hell do they keep giving so much time to John Kasich? Anybody have any thoughts on that? I really do not know. I mean, I just do not know. <laughs> I feel bad well, I mean, for saying this, but I don't, I don't know. I just remember it. I'll never forget that line. He came out. He's like, I don't even want to be here. The only reason I'm yeah. here is because my daughter wants me here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, you got a guy who doesn't want to be here. So you're just giving more airtime, maybe hoping that he'll he'll get so overwhelmed and be uncomfortable that maybe he won't show up again. I don't know. I don't, They're giving him way too much credit. I hate to admit this as a journalist, but I'm not even really that familiar with them. I, no, have neither to am I. <laughs> I, I think it's safe to say that most people aren't. If we could put that poll back up so the viewers could see it, uh, it's pretty evident by the Drudge poll that the majority of America isn't too familiar <laughs> with John Kasich, but they keep pushing this guy out there, you know, like he's the, the prom queen or something. Like, you're going to love this guy. Yeah. And what a difference a year makes because a year ago, I did an article, I think it was in November, a little over a year ago, in which polls showed that Romney and Jeb Bush were one and two in the GOP uh, polling for president. Romney's not even running, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. And then Jeb Bush was like polling very highly in second place, and he's a nobody now. So, you know, it goes back to the whole what I was talking about earlier about the populist movement. And it's funny because I saw an article Kurt wrote uh, from back in the day today in which he said that unless something drastic happens, it's more than likely we're going to see a Jeb Bush or even a Romney in the White House in 2016. Something drastic did happen. We have this populist movement. We have Donald Trump out of nowhere surging in the polls. And number two is Ted Cruz, an outsider who's, I'd say, quasi-establishment. But at least his rhetoric is definitely not a strategy, uh, establishment. It's very much uh, libertarian. Well, what do you think, Kit, about the fact that there's also a populist movement on the other side with Bernie Sanders? Yeah, you know, I think it's all interrelated is that, uh, yeah, Bernie Sanders has been compared in a lot of ways to Ron Paul in 2012, although ideology, they're complete opposites. Yes. Right. But you see, I think the whole Bernie Sanders even goes back to the whole Occupy Wall Street movement. <laughs> where people are finally starting to notice that it's the big mega banks that are screwing up the world, the Federal Reserve. Yet, people are seeing the problems, but they don't know what the solution is. It goes back to even the Bundy Ranch thing, where 
they see the problem with the BLM, but they think that starting a campfire at this wildlife refuge with guns going on air saying, uh, you know, this is going to be a one-on-one -on -one Armageddon, you know, it's on, it's on. That's not going to get you anywhere because they've already lost some narrative in the media. They've already been demonized. And yeah, I agree with them. The BLM, I've even seen it before with the, uh, the court documents showing that the BLM was, a federal judge actually said the BLM was engaged in conspiracy against ranchers to take all their land rights away. So the militia is right on that front, but they're wrong with the perception and how they're allowing themselves to be perceived by the media because unlike the medieval ages, right now the government has control on people by deception and by public Carly perception. Wrap it up. Yes, a very right. good point there, Kit. Now, uh, we got just a few minutes left here, so I want to do a quick, oh, Darren McBreen. Whoa, where did this guy come from? Kit and I, we are, we are playing musical chairs right now. Okay, well, Darren McBreen, you've heard uh, the conversation here. Go ahead and chime in and throw in your two cents. Well, I guess uh, this will be my closing comment for the night. I think Donald Trump totally hijacked the debate tonight. And in the process, he got, he got millions of dollars for the veterans in the process. And so I, I think that was a very interesting. You know, we could start calling him maybe the GOP pirate, you know? <laughs> the I, GOP I know. pirate. But um, the conservative media in this country right now, I, I've noticed they kind of have a bipolar view of Fox News right now. Because a lot of them, they will still go to Fox and they'll still tune into Fox for breaking news coverage. But they no longer trust the analysis, right? And, and for good reason. And a lot of the ultra conservatives nowadays, they are tuning in or they are going to Breitbart. You know, they are going to the Drudge Report and they are going to yours truly, Infowars.com. And that's because we have become the mainstream news media. We are the voice of reason and we've now become the, the voice of resistance and the voice of the revolution. So I think this was a victory for us tonight. Very well said, uh, Darren McBrain. Thank you so much for your closing comment. I guess this would be a good time. We got about nine minutes left to go around the table, and get everybody's closing comment. So let's go now to uh, Joe Biggs. Joe Biggs, you've been waiting on the line uh, with about one or two minutes. Give us your closing comment. Well, I uh, hope everybody takes the time to uh, check out that footage of Lavoie Finicum and the uh, standoff between himself and the uh, FBI and Oregon State Troopers. It's definitely a, a very uh, moving video to see something like that because you've heard a lot of different uh, uh, scenarios of uh, how people have said they thought it played out. And uh, I just want to encourage everyone to go watch it, see for themselves, and, uh, you know, let's uh, hopefully this thing can come to a peaceful end. And we can also bring uh, to the light the fact that the government is taking people's land, and that is uh, something that's horrible, and we need to come together and uh, try to shed as much light on that as possible. Thank you from Joe in Oregon. Thank you, Joe. All right, thank you so much, yes. Joe Biggs. Uh, closing comment, Leanne McAdoo, then we'll go to Kit Daniels. Well, uh, you know, I agree. Obviously, we didn't watch too much of the debate tonight, and we saw what happened with Trump, where he was able to uh, take a lot of the, the prestige of the debate away and take it over to his, uh, his event. I, I do wish that he would have stepped up and answered some questions on policy. However, I get it. He had already decided that he was going to create a, an, an event for the veterans. So it wasn't about a counter debate or something like that. However, I think that was, you know, I agree that took him down a few notches. Um, but what I also got from this debate is that the establishment media doesn't hold the reins. They're not the holder of the ring anymore. Very good. Uh, Kit Daniels. Yeah, as cliche as it sounds, it's definitely the best of times and the worst of times. I mean, we see the government encroaching on all of our freedoms at all angles, but at the same time, we see this populist revolt with people waking up from various ideologies. You know, it's not just this, a certain subsect of libertarianism, but you got conservatives, you got even, like Leanne said, you got some socialist Democrats that are, you know, starting to finally ask questions. And they're not supporting Hillary Clinton, they're supporting Bernie Sanders. So where I'm going with all of this is, is that you're seeing this mass awakening that's a very, uh, it's something you'd only see maybe 1,000, 2,000 years. So okay. it's, it's very much an exciting times that we live in today, as, as dangerous as the times are now. Yeah. Very good, Kit Daniels. And I guess my closing comment would be, 
Uh, you know, I know we talked a lot about Trump tonight. There are many other contenders in this race. Uh, you know, Bernie Sanders, I've said before, and I'll say again, if, had I been 17 years old when this race was going on, I may go for Bernie Sanders too, because the thought of getting a bunch of freebies sounds good, but once you become an adult and you realize freebies aren't free, it changes your perception very quickly. Mrs. Clinton, I can go down the laundry list. I would encourage anybody who is spect uh, skeptical of her, go watch the Larry Nichols interview. You can see many other things as well. Listen to the guys who fought on the ground in Benghazi as well. Um, going down the list, many other people, uh, Chris Christie. Uh, while he is pro-gun in some aspects, you know, he pardoned a guy who was arrested on a bogus gun charge. He also does push some very authoritarian things. Uh, wants to shoot down Russian jets, you know, like he's duck hunting. Uh, on and on, Jeb Bush, I think the guy's living off Dynasty, and I could go all the way down the line, but I don't have time. I'd rather spend the time talking to you, the viewer. And then we want to thank you for tuning in to the InfoWars Nightly News tonight. We also want to remind you of the great specials available in the InfoWars shop, where right now you can get DNA Force, our flagship product, for 25% off. This is our most advanced product at InfoWars Life. It contains BioPQQ, and it is loaded with the patented BioPQQ compound, which is backed by over 175 clinical studies by major respected researchers. It also has CoQ10, and it is known as one of the most powerful antioxidant products that can protect your health from free radicals. And it is essential to basic cell function and one of the primary building blocks of life. And you get all this right now in the InfoWars shop, not to mention the Hillary for Prison t-shirts, very popular if you go out to these debate um, uh, not making them anymore. Yeah, we had it. they're on limited supply, so you may get one or two. Also, we have the brand new Pro Gun T-shirts, the We the People Will Never Surrender shirts. All the things available: the life straw, life straws, the books, the DVDs, the hats, hoodies. Now we got the the Pro Max shower filters, all the great stuff. The Infowars battery. If we can click on that uh, that battery, I actually bought one of these from my car. I think for the simple fact that you can jump your own car with this, that is worth the price of it. Just for that one simple reason. I've already many... had to jump my car three times this winter. Yeah. I, and I've had to wait and for you my don't... neighbor to come. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, look. Wow, wow. It's just uh, you talk of it and it shall <laughs> appear. Maybe we can hold that up and get a, get a nice shot with Leanne McAdoo. Now, I bought one of these things and also have some DNA for it, but I don't talk about the battery pack. Uh, maybe we can open it up. And uh, you can jump your own car with this. That alone is worth the price of it. I have, so that, have had to wait because you don't three have to. Times you don't have to call AAA. You don't have to wait for you know your name. You don't have to wake up your neighbor at six in the morning. You can pull out your own, your own cables here and jump your own battery. Just charge it and it stays in the car and it's ready. I keep it in my car at all times, so I'm good to go. And luckily, I haven't had to use it. But if so I, I this do, cold weather makes your battery die. Yes, but yeah, especially if you live someplace up north, it's a very great product to have. So. That's about it for our show tonight. We definitely thank you, the viewers, for joining us. I know it's been a very long broadcast day. They started at 11 a.m. Central to uh, 3 p.m., came back 7 p.m., and now it's about 11 p.m., so the crew has had a very long day. Clap it up for the crew. Good job, crew, everybody in there from the day show to the nightly news crew to uh, some of our side graphics Well, oh, At least now we did learn that Alex Jones likes big butts and he cannot lie. Yep. I think that was key information. That was key intel, so you get to learn something about Alex as well as the rest of the crew. <laughs> so uh, signing off from the InfoWars.com studio, Jakari Jackson along with Leanne McAdoo, Joe Biggs, Alex Jones, Richard Reeves, Kit Daniels, Darren McBreen, did I forget anybody? The crew, and especially right. you at home, uh, Marcos Morales, who also had a, a cameo in today's broadcast. Thank you so much, all you guys, for watching. And Alex Jones Show will be back tomorrow live. 7 a.m. Central Time, right here from Austin, Texas. 7 a.m. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients, that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockouts it, InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA, so it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's 19 dollars
you take one or two of these and it just is really clean restful sleep is what the reviews are it's what i've experienced